have to click record. Hi, Mauro. Uh, thank you for coming here and letting me interview you. It's so, a pleasure. Okay, I have a few questions for you. Um, can okay. you tell me a little bit about your background? Uh, I'm a biologist. I did my bachelor degree in biology in Brazil, and my master degree was in ecology. And then I moved to England, to the University of Cambridge in England to do, bio, to do ecology. So I had a PhD in ecology. Okay. Where are you from? I'm from Brazil. Uh, I was a professor there, and now I am a professor in ecology at the University of Miami. And what are you a PhD in? My PhD, I study plants and animals. What's the importance of plants for the animals? And what's your specialty? I study animals that plant the forest. So when you see a rainforest or a, a forest in general, uh, all the animals eat the fruits and plant this forest. So I try to understand why do you need to have birds and bears and you know, primates, yeah. all these animals that plant the forest. And why are rainforests important to the world? Well, the rainforest uh, is a place with the highest biodiversity in the world. Nowhere in the world you have so many plants and animals and fungi and bacteria. So all these animals, they have in their DNA information so if we want to save you know if you want to find a, a to solve a problem for humans it's going to be in the rainforest we have plants that can produce um, drugs for human well-being we have different foods uh, that we can use the rainforest is like a, a big library with all things that we can discover. So when we destroy a rainforest, it's like destroying a big library without reading the books. That's why we need to save the rainforest. Can you share with me some pictures from some of your trips? Yes, I can send you some pictures. I can show you also my last uh, trip to the Amazon. Um, and uh, well, I, I've been working in, in, in the Atlantic Forest of Brazil for many years. The Atlantic Forest is in the coast of Brazil, but also I've been working in the Pantanal, where it's like uh, the Serengeti of South America. It's a place where you have so many birds, so many animals. And recently, I start studying in the Amazon forest. So I'm going to send you, show you some of these photographs. Um, let me show you here. I'm going to share my video, my okay. screen. So here I am in the Amazon forest. Oh. Some are, this is a bird. Ah, that's a nice video here. I can't see it. No? No. Ah, just a second. There we go. Well, let me show you again. This is a taper. So that's in the Amazon forest. Mm -hmm. so I went to, to a hotel, you know, where we stay. And it's surrounded by rainforest. And this is the largest mammal in the whole uh, South America is the taper. That's cool. It's super cool. It's an herbivore. They eat only plants and very nice and they're not dangerous at all. <laughs> they just came to the hotel to drink the, the water. And, and then you, we saw this. That's the tarantula. Oh. But, a lot of people are afraid of tarantulas, but they are harmless. They, they don't really? bite you. They're not uh, venomous. They're nice. This is the rainforest. 
Here is the Brazil nut, a big fruit. Mm -hmm. You see the fruit here? There's a fungi, fruits, fungi. So this is a place where animals come to, to have a bath. Here's what I do. I put a camera trap. You see a camera here? Uh -huh. Yeah. And all the fruits of these Brazil nut. And then I study who, what are the animals in the forest that feed on the Brazil nuts and plant the seeds. So uh -huh. the animals in the forest are like squirrels. They come, get the fruit and plant. So I'm trying to discover, these are some of my colleagues, my biologists. You see all the fruits here, and there we put several cameras around. I think there's one camera here. You see all these fruits? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we go to the forest to study the animals, but also the plants. So I can send you all these photographs so you can incorporate in your... Uh, ah, this is very nice. This is how to open the fruit. You see the seeds here? Uh-huh, yeah. Oh. They are dark, but you can wash them and they, they become... So I went to, to the Amazon to record a, a film. So, so these two are producers. <laughs> and then we, we were there filming uh, the Brazil nut story. It's really hard to open this fruit. So you see the animals, they do that with their teeth. They don't have a machete, right? Yeah. So you see the seeds now. How do they taste? Well, they, they, uh, they're like big rodents and macaws. They are the only ones that can open these fruits here. Look the seeds here. These are all Brazil nuts and it's very nutritious seeds. Mm -hmm. Look, here's a primate in the Amazon, a marmoset. Uh, and it's super rare. And it, and they exist only in this region in the Amazon. How long is the tail? Oh, it's quite long. It's, it's like uh, 15, 20 centimeters. Mm. So this, let me, ah, this is uh, some super rare animal. That's um, a fox in the middle of the Amazon. It's one of the most rare animals in the world. What's it called? They call, I think it's how they call it in, in uh, small ear fox. Oh. So only using these cameras, we can detect that they exist because you will never see them. They are like ghosts in the forest. Here are another photograph. And here's the Amazon forest. Mm. So I'm in a tower with more than 40 meters high. Mm. How big is the Amazon? The Amazon is bigger than the, uh, it's two thirds of the United States. If you get the map of US, mm -hmm. you remove one third, two third would be the Amazon. Mm -hmm. so the Amazon is huge, it's very big. Uh, it's the largest rainforest in the whole world. What are the main threats to the rainforest? Well, people are destroying the rainforest for many, many reasons, but mostly to plant uh grasslands for cattle beef because we eat too much meat uh and there's a big demand for that uh 
plants are uh, people are destroying the, the rainforest. Here's just a video with drone, but people are destroying the Amazon to put um, uh, cattle ranching. Oh. Let me show you. Here is on the plane. And what's extinction? Extinction is when the last, last individual of one species disappear. Imagine that you are the last of the species and then you die. This is an extinction. So when the last panda or the last grizzly bear, the last individual die, this is an extinction. So we know a lot about dinosaur extinction, right? There is no more dinosaurs because they all disappear. Why should we care about extinction? Well, because all these plants and animals, they carry in their DNA information that we need to decode. We need to discover why, what is this information? This information, you know, planet Earth has 4.5 billion years and life has about 3.5 billion years. So uh, the evolution of organism creates uh, a lot of diversity, many, many species of bacteria, birds, mammals, and plants. So when we lose one species, we are losing a lot of information that we could use for our own benefit. Mm. So, the theme for Earth Day this year is climate action. What's climate change? Climate change uh, is when humans burning fossil fuels, like using cars or polluting the atmosphere. We are releasing too much CO2 to the atmosphere and monoxide of carbon as well and methane as well. So this creates like a blanket uh, around the earth and make the planet warmer. And what's happened to this? Well, many of the organs, they don't like warmer planets. They never, we, we have more than 400% uh, of CO2 in the atmosphere now. So the climate is going to become warmer and warmer and warmer until we cannot live anymore here. So that's why climate change is so dangerous. That's scary. <laughs> yeah, so it's up to us to use the, the resources wisely. So that's why we, we should use the Amazon, but not just trying to plant, to put cows and, you know, and just to create beef, to, to produce beef. We need every tree here, every organism. They are very important. It's like burning a library. So every organism, every tree, every mammal, like the primate that I show you, they can produce many things that we can use if we were wise enough. Have you seen any changes in the rainforest since you started studying it? If I see any? Yeah, changes. Yes, since I began my career, there was there is much less rainforest in the world. <laughs> and some place that I like to go because they were pristine, now they are not anymore. They were destroyed, and this is very sad. On the other hand, I've been to several places that was completely destroyed, and humans replanted the area so they restore so they plant trees which bring back the animals so there's two sides of the story people who are interested in destruction of the rainforest and people who are interested in restoring the rainforest so what are some ways people around the world can do to help the rainforest? Well, first of all, we have to be better consumers. When you go to a McDonald's, 
you never realize that McDonald destroyed the rainforest to produce cattle to feed you, right? So I don't think it's, it's wise enough to, to do that. So we need to be better consumers and see from where our food comes from. So everything that you eat, that you buy, has to come from sustainable uh, places, sustainable farms, uh, organic farms, or try to eat less meat if you can. Uh, this will save the planet. Right now in my STEM class, we're studying electricity and we've learned that hydroelectricity is a green energy source, but it also causes environmental destruction. How can we balance the need for clean energy sources with preserving the nature and rainforest? So the construction of uh, large dams to produce energy is not a green energy. Actually, it's the worst uh, kind of energy that we want because millions of hectares of the rainforest is flooded and indigenous land as well. So Brazil is, and most of places in the world are destroying rainforest, destroying indigenous place to have a big dam. So it's not green, it's not social accepted. So we need to change the way we use energy. Maybe with wind energy, solar energy, you know, all the solar energy that reach Earth, all the plants use only 1%. 99% return to, to the universe without use. So if we could have better strategies to use the energy from the sun, we won't need to destroy the rainforest for the big uh, dams to produce uh, electricity. That sounds good. What advice would you give to young people today who want to protect and preserve the environment? Uh, first of all, I think we need to be, you know, better consumers and better citizenship. You know, what, what do you eat? What do you wear? What do you do? Uh, matters for the environment. So things that you eat here may be affecting the orangutans. So if you use some kinds of food here that have palm oil, this palm oil uh, have been uh, planted, destroying the rainforest in the other side of the world that's in Asia. So orangutans are becoming threatened by extinction because we are using too much palm oil. So we need to be aware of every decision that you make in your life and it has to start it now. Your generation are the one who will inherit it. A better or a worse world, depending what you do. That makes sense. Okay, thank you for your time.